I want to take you back to a video that we produced back in 2016, so seven years ago. Check this out, and then I'll tell you why I'm showing it to you again today in 2023. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. If perception is substituted for reality, there is no end to the social madness that follows. You do not just have a man being named Woman of the Year. You do not just have a white woman who identifies as black. You have a father of seven who identifies as a six-year-old girl. You have a man who identifies as a dog named Boomer. You have a young lady who believes she's a cat trapped in a woman's body. You have a man who has his ears removed because he identifies as a parrot. And you have a man who changed his identity to female, but who has now had, quote, her ears and nose removed to transform into a dragon lady with scales, a forked tongue, and a horned skull. But why not? More power to him, her, it. If that's what he, she, it perceives himself, herself, itself to be, why not? Well, back in 2015, in my book, Art West in the Gay Revolution, I talked about furries, about young people, old people who identified as part animal or had an animal identity. And they said there were hundreds of thousands of them. Of course, they're rejected, misunderstood by their peers, just like many who identify as gay and trans would say growing up they were misunderstood and, and bullied and, and, and ridiculed by their peers. Now the furries are saying the same thing. And I wrote an article last year for Daily Wire about the man who developed the heart monitor for the smartwatch, as I'm wearing now a smartwatch, that for decades he's identified as a cheetah named Spotticus. You think, Dr. Brown, are you losing your mind? No, no, these are things actually going on. I was talking to one of our producers who's in his mid-20s and saying when he was in high school that there were kids who identified as furries and that they were ridiculed by others and misunderstood, etc. but that was their identity. Well, I, I want you to know how widespread this has become. This is now Piers Morgan, who is not a radical, Bible-thumping, Holy Ghost, Jesus-only preacher. Listen to this report from England from Piers Morgan. It wasn't so long ago that when teachers asked children what they want to be, they meant what profession. Now they're asking them which animal, object or beast they may identify as and tailoring their lessons accordingly. This isn't satire. It's a genuine story. It's true. It's going on in schools up and down the country. And for those of us who have warned for years about the inevitable consequence of limitless self-identity, it sadly won't come as a surprise. But it is shocking. This story begins with a video that circulated yesterday of a teacher in England scolding two pupils for refusing to accept that one of their classmates identified as a cat. You're questioning their identity. I wasn't a question. I was just saying about the gender. I didn't say anything about them. But where did um, you get this idea from? There's only two gender. Gender is not linked to do with the not linked to the class that you were born with. Gender is about how you identify. There is actually three large percentages. Because you can be born intersex. You can be born with male and female body parts or hormones. In terms of gender, there are. Lots of genders. If you have a friend or a girl, you have a picture of one. Yeah. But you identify with the gender that of the sexual organ that you're born with yeah. or you're with. That's yeah. basically what you're saying. Yeah. Which is really despicable. Despicable. So at the age of 13, those students who were wise enough to express an honestly held opinion, which is one most people in the world would share, well, for that, their own teacher says they're despicable. And if they hold that view, they should go to a different school. That view being that girls have vaginas and boys have penises. That's so despicable, they would have to leave the school. I think what's despicable in that exchange is what that teacher said. The Daily Telegraph that they followed up were interviewing pupils at schools across the United Kingdom for a major investigation. It read like a farce, like they made it up. But it was actually true. They came up with all sorts of examples from all over the country that looked like we were living on, frankly, a different planet to the one that most of us think we're living on. Which makes sense, because some of the kids they write about are identifying as alien life forms literally on a different planet. They say that children in high schools are being allowed to self-identify as cats, horses, dinosaurs, even 
a moon, not the moon, a moon. And they're deadly serious about this. Optimus causes disruption in lessons, the Telegraph reported, because in some cases they'll only communicate in animal noises. Pupils at schools where children identify as cats complain to the newspaper that classes are dominated by the children because they insist on meowing. This is not a joke. This is serious. One pupil at a state secondary school in Wales said a fellow pupil feels very discriminated against if you do not refer to them as cat self. Telegraph discovered that a pupil at one high school is insisting on being addressed as a dinosaur, at another as a horse. One wears a cape and wants to be acknowledged, like I said, as a moon. The children are allowed to wear items like cat's ears, while other human-identifying children are rebuked for untucked shirts. Well, enough is enough. Uh, all right, so, so this is how widespread it is in the schools. The, it, schools in England. Uh, look, I've been documenting this for years, and people say, you're crazy, you're out of your mind, this isn't happening. Well, it is happening. I was just interacting with one colleague, his daughter is in college, and, and one of her classmates identifies as a cat. And to the, to the best of his knowledge, there are a few others as well that identify as animals. But look, when you interview students on college campuses, and, and, and the interviewer is a male, and the man says to the students, if I identify as a woman, is that okay? Well, sure, if that's how you feel. Well, what if I identify as a, as a woman who's a child? Well, yeah, if that's how you feel, well, what if I identify as a black woman who's a child? Well, well, yeah, I mean, if that's who you identify as, that's what you believe, it's, it's gone this far. As I've said, we've gone from the old days of absolute morality to relative morality. Whatever is right in your own eyes is right. Whatever is wrong is wrong. We've gone from absolute truth to relative truth. Right? Well, you have your truth, I have my truth. Now we've gone from absolute reality to relative reality. Reality is whatever you perceive it to be. No, it's not. If you identify as a bird and you fall out of a window in a, a skyscraper, you will not be able to fly. If you identify as a fish and you're thrown overboard in, in treacherous waters, you will not be able to swim the way a fish swims. You will need air. And if you identify as a woman and you're a biological male, you will never able, be able to, to conceive a child or carry a child or nurse a child. The, <clears throat> we are not whatever we identify as. That is not reality. The bad news is things have become completely unhinged and our children are the greatest victims of this. The good news is the further things have gone, the more people have said, this is crazy. This is outlandish. This is not real. May awakening come. May truth become truth and reality become reality and morality become reality. Uh, morality become morality once again for each of us and and may those who identify as cats or dogs, may those who identify as something other than their biological sex, may those who identify as alien life forms, may they come to know the Lord and have a radical transformation experience. It's time. Hey, friends, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, click on one of the boxes on the screen, check out another one of our videos and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. You know, we discovered that about 60% of you that are watching our videos aren't subscribers. So subscribe today doesn't cost you a dime. And if you want to support our work, Line of Fire, and all the things that we do, follow one of the links on the screen below.